As photographers, when we talk about gear, especially here on YouTube, it's usually about the latest camera and all its specs, or what is the sharpest lens, or maybe there's some fancy new LED lighting with all these special effects and features. But really, I think the unsung hero of camera gear is the humble tripod. And I would argue that after you get your first camera and lens, that a tripod should be your very next purchase. Because it'll allow you to expand your photography in ways that no other piece of gear can do. I mean, we're talking about doing landscape photography, architectural photography, fireworks, long exposure, astrophotography, product photography, art reproduction, scanning negatives. I mean, I can't think of too many genres of photography that wouldn't benefit tremendously from using a tripod and certainly no professional photographer could do their job without one. What I'd like to do today is talk about various tripods that I use because I have a lot of different kinds and also specifically talk about a new tripod that KNF Concepts sent out to me to review. So when I was looking at the selection of available tripods, I had certain criteria in mind. Uh, primarily, it had to be uh, travel friendly, meaning it's going to be small, compact, and lightweight. Uh, two, it had to reach a certain minimum height so that I could bring a camera up to my eye level. Three, it had to have a certain uh, stability or capability for weight capacity. And then four, it had to use the standard Arca Swiss mounting system, which is really the most compatible across all kinds of accessories like L brackets, base plates, uh, peak design. They all use the standard Arca Swiss mounting system. Now, when we think about traveling with a tripod, there's really two scenarios. There's, there's the one where you're traveling around the world, you're on a plane, you know, and you need to take the tripod with you in your luggage. I find that the tripods that can compact down to a shorter length overall are easier to travel with in that respect because you can put them directly inside your luggage. Uh, they tend to be a little bit thicker overall when they're compacted down, but height is more important, I think, in this scenario. However, when, when I think about traveling with a tripod, I think about photo walks and hiking. Uh, in that case, I find that tripods, even though they don't compact down quite as short, uh, they tend to be thinner or less wide. And these kind of tripods are easier to use in the field because you don't typically you don't have to reinvert the legs back out to a downward position. You just extend the legs and you're good to go. Um, also, they're easier to put into the side pockets of, say, your backpack if you're uh, hiking or underneath your messenger bag if you have tripod straps on your messenger bag. And they're also easier to uh, hand hold if you're just going to carry by hand. The next thing you need to think about is the overall height of the tripod. And of course, this will be relative to how tall you are. I'm a five, eight and a half just for reference. But generally speaking, you want the tripod to be as tall as possible without extending the center column. Meaning where does the base of the tripod at the plate reach relative to where your eye level is. So in, on this tripod here, the can of concepts, you can see it's a little bit below my eye level, but it's still relatively comfortable. Say versus shorter tripods, I have to come down quite a bit. And over time, this might be a little bit more uncomfortable to use and will have some limitations in the field. Um, also, Generally speaking, the less you have to use the center column, the better. It's going to be much more stable when you have the tripod base at the bottom here versus extending the center column. So either way, you can bring both of these tripods up to your eye level. So for this, this one here, I need to bring it to about here, which is about, about one fist. And then on this one, to bring it to eye level is about right there. And that's about two fists there. So you can see clearly that I didn't have to extend this one quite as far, so it's gonna inherently be more stable, say, than this one that I had to extend quite a bit. In fact, it's almost at its uh, maximum height, which is right there. And that's just a little bit above my eye level. Whereas this one, you can see, can go quite a bit higher. And I'll, I'll put the uh, maximum height here on the screen. Now, I don't recommend using it like this because it's not gonna be stable. As you can see, it, it, it wiggles just a little bit, just, just like this one. Uh, but this, this will give you certainly more options in the field, say, than tripods that don't get quite as high. Now, the third thing you need to think about when we're talking about travel tripods is the overall weight of the tripod itself. And I found that right around 1.5 kilos is a comfortable weight. 
Anything more than that, you'll really start to feel it in the field. And anything less than that, generally speaking, I found they didn't really quite meet the minimum height that you would need. Uh, so if you can find a tripod in the 1.5 kilo range or lighter, the better, that still meets your minimum height requirement. Now this tripod here is actually a little bit lighter. It's 1.4 kilos with a good height for me. And this one here is at about 1.6 kilos. So it's about 200 grams more. Uh, and it's still a relatively comfortable height though. I wish it was a little bit taller like this one. And then finally, you need to think about the total weight capacity of the tripod. How much weight can it bear? And compare that to your heaviest camera and lens setup. Uh, so for example, uh, my heaviest setup would be the uh, Olympus OM-1 with a 300 millimeter f4 and teleconverter. And this camera only weighs uh, like five pounds altogether or about 2.3 kilos. And this tripod is rated to 33 pounds or 15 kilos. So we're well within the rated capacity of this tripod. And as a rule of thumb, I think you really don't wanna go more than half the rated capacity of what you're gonna be putting on a tripod. Uh, that's a much safer limit because I, I don't know how ambitious 35 pounds is on a tripod like this, or even this one is rated for uh, 17 pounds. I think that's still a little bit ambitious. Uh, I really wouldn't put anything more than, you know, maybe five pounds on this one as well. Uh, just to give you an example, this uh, camera here with lens, this weighs about 1.2 kilos or less than three pounds. So again, we're still well within the weight limit of the tripod. And part of that is because of the materials they use to build these. This is a carbon fiber tripod, and this is an all aluminum tripod, which we'll talk about in the next section. So now that we've met the basic criteria, I start to look at the uh, very specific design elements of the tripod and the features it may have. So the first thing I look for, is the uh, tripod head removable? And is it included in the price? Uh, two is, is the center column reversible? Meaning can we invert the center column and hang the camera upside down? And then three is, what is the material of the tripod? Is it uh, aluminum or is it carbon fiber? So let's start with the tripod head. Is it included in the price of the tripod and is it removable? Now, if it's included in the price of the tripod, that's gonna offer a couple of advantages. Typically, you're gonna get a better value when you buy the tripod legs and head together. Uh, and two, it's gonna be a perfect match, meaning the tripod head is gonna fit the tripod legs. Because if you buy your tripod head separately, sometimes they might be a little bit too big or a little bit too small. Uh, where it's going to extend over the base of the tripod or it's going to be kind of recessed inside of the base. Either way, it's going to, there's going to be a compromise there in stability. Uh, so you want to make sure if you do buy your tripod head separately, uh, you want to get one that matches the size of your tripod base here. And the reason you want to have a removable tripod head is so you can use different types of tripod heads for different purposes. Uh, think of it like your camera with interchangeable lenses. Uh, you want to have a tripod with interchangeable tripod heads. All right, now let's take a look at some of the more common tripod heads that you can get. Uh, the first one here is actually a video tripod. And these are typically fluid filled to allow very smooth panning left to right and also tilting up and down. And they almost always have a handle attached to kind of facilitate that motion. Now, I don't recommend getting one of these for photography uh, because it's not very flexible and it's kind of a pain to use in the field and they usually don't have the same rigidity as these other tripod heads. Uh, this one also has a leveling base attached to it uh, so that when you are panning left to right, you can maintain a level horizon. Now, the most common type of tripod head is the ball head, which I have on both of these. Uh, so of course, this allows you to tilt the camera to almost any angle. Most of them also uh, have a notch so that you can uh, go into portrait mode or point the camera straight up like this or straight down in this case. So this is a very, very versatile type of tripod head. Um, and then of course you have full 360 uh, rotation. But if you need a little more precision, uh, I'd recommend probably like a gear head. Uh, this is very common like in architectural type photography, a lot of product photography, macro photography, uh, art reproduction. Um, you know, these, these are very common uses for this, even in landscapes where you want to be able to dial in separately and very precisely your X and Y axis. So I can tilt down just slightly or tilt up. So if I want to correct any kind of keystoning errors, uh, I can do that independent of the horizon. 
And then if I need to make adjustments to the leveling, I can sort of tilt it left or right and dial in exactly what I need. Uh, and then over here I have more specialized type tripod head. It's not really a tripod head. It's more of an equatorial mount for mounting a tracker on for astrophotography. But the key here is that having an interchangeable tripod head is, uh, gives you a lot of options in the future to change the function of your tripod to do more specialized type photography. Generally speaking for photography, I recommend you just get a ball head, uh, mainly because this gives you the maximum versatility, being able to adjust the camera to any angle, and then also, of course, you get the full uh, 360 rotation. Now, the other thing I like to look for is the uh, reversible center column. So these tripods all have reversible center columns, say for the uh, video tripod. But just to give you an example, uh, this tripod here, to uh, reverse the center column, uh, you just remove the stopper down here first. And it just unscrews. I'll just put this in my pocket. We'll loosen this and then it pulls straight out and then we we'll slide it back in like so and then you put the stopper back in i guess this is optional but i always do it actually i just keep the stopper in my drawer i never take it out with me but i make sure that i tighten this down because what the stopper does is it keeps the center column from falling out and in the opposite direction, it keeps it from pulling all the way out. But that's that. Uh, KNF Concepts has come up with a much faster workflow. So I'll just demonstrate real quick. I'll loosen this. And there's a little button down here that I push to release the column. And then when I put it back in, I just push that button. And we're all nice and secure. Then I just tighten this. So I don't have to worry about losing the little stopper here or leaving it at home because I don't like uh, taking it in and out. And then if I want to reverse it back to the other side, I just push the button there and snap it back in. So it's very, very fast, efficient workflow. Now, one of the things you might want to consider after the tripod's kind of met all of your other requirements is the build material of the tripod itself. And generally speaking, they come in two forms, either carbon fiber or all aluminum. And uh, carbon fiber offers a lot of advantages over aluminum tripods in that carbon fiber is five times stronger by weight and also has better dampening properties. And it's also, you know, rust and corrosion resistant, but aluminum is to some degree anyway. Uh, but just to give you an example, the, this KNF Concepts tripod is a carbon fiber and uh, my Mi Photo here is all aluminum. This has a 33 pounds weight capacity and weighs uh, three pounds. This one here has a 17 pound weight capacity and weighs 3.6 pounds. So you can see this has a significantly higher load capacity and is lighter than its aluminum counterpart. Now some people prefer heavier tripods for better stability, which is certainly true, uh, but you can always add weight to the tripod later, either via the hooks here on the bottom or you can get one of those little tripod pouches that I use, and then you can add weight to add stability when you need it. And I'd much rather have a lighter, stronger tripod with me all the time, and then just add weight the few times that I need to, rather than have to lug a heavier tripod around. All right, now let's take a closer look at the KNF Concepts tripod. This is the A254C4 carbon fiber. And the reason I chose this particular tripod, say over all of the other ones that I could have uh, chosen from is because it met all of the requirements that we've been talking about up to this point. Now what attracted me to this model say over their other varieties is what they call their embedded base for pro level stability. And what that is is they've created sort of a concave shape or bowl here in the base of the tripod that the ball head and plate can rest into creating additional points of contact when you tighten down the center column. So it really does feel like it makes a difference. I mean this thing is rock solid. Uh, the other thing I really like about this is that it uses uh, spring-loaded locking clips for the angle adjustments of the legs. So that makes this really uh, a one-handed operation when you want to change the leg angle. So I'll just demonstrate real quick. I just lift it up, push the locking tab, let go, and then I can go to the next locking position. Or I can push it down and go to the last locking position uh, all the way up here. And then if I want to go back to the original locking position, it automatically locks back down because it's spring-loaded. And now I'm back to the uh, minimum angle. So again, 
This helps with the workflow in the field, just makes it a little bit easier, but it's also much easier to use with gloves on, say, versus the standard uh, type of way to adjust the uh, tripod angle is with these like push pins, where it's almost always a two-handed operation, where you have to hold the tripod, pull the pin, adjust the leg, push the pin back in, and then adjust the leg into its locking position. So the workflow is much better with a spring-loaded locking clip. Uh, the other thing they've done is they use the standard, what's now pretty much standard, are quarter turn twist locks. So you can unlock and lock these with just a quarter turn. So again, it, it makes the workflow much faster in the field. So that's uh, fully retracted. And then if I want to extend it, I just turn them all at once a quarter turn and I can extend them out. And then lock each one with just a quarter turn back. And the twist locks are all rubberized. So it makes it, again, much easier in the field to turn these. And then going down to the very bottom of the tripod where the feet are, is these are uh, just rubber feet, but they're replaceable. So you can take these out and put in new feet if you need to. Uh, it's just standard quarter 20 threads in here, or you can replace them with spikes if you want additional stability, say on ice or softer ground. So this tripod can also be converted into a monopod. You would just attach this one leg here labeled monopod, then unscrew the ball head from the base and screw that back into the monopod leg. And as you can see here, it does bring the camera up to a pretty decent height. And I'll put the specs here to the side of the exact measurements for that. And then last but not least is they have two quarter 20 screws right here on the base of the tripod. So this allows you to attach accessories uh, directly to the tripod rather than say needing a cage on your camera. So if you want to attach external monitors or microphones or additional lighting, uh, you can do that directly onto the tripod. So it just gives you some extra versatility that you might not otherwise normally have. So what I've done is I've attached an external monitor. So when I'm doing any kind of product photography or light painting, um, it's just much easier to do with a larger monitor. And I don't have to set up the monitor separately, uh, like on the table or use uh, clamps and things like that, like I've done in the past. Having these quarter 20 screws right on the tripod uh, base here is very, very convenient. So I really like this tripod and I can highly recommend it because it's met all of the uh, criteria that we've talked about up to this point and plus the additional uh, little details or design elements that I really like that make this tripod very easy to use in the field. And Ken Faith has also provided me with a coupon code for my viewers that I'll give you, I believe, an additional 17% off. So definitely check that out. In the links below and take advantage of that. And while you're on the KenFaith website, check out the KNF Concepts uh, ND filters. I recommend their variable NDs and their uh, 10 stop ND filter of the Nano X variety. Uh, those are filters that I've personally used and have been using for years because if you get a tripod, you definitely want to start doing some long exposure photography. So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope to see you again soon.